introduction. So finally, I don't need to talk about limited angle tomography today. So today I will talk about data truncation using deep learning. So yeah, here is the PRS slide. So you know I have been in the lab for so long. And since last PRS, I have two, oh, one journal accepted and also one BVM uh, conference. Yeah, and also dissertation. Oh, I just received the email. It's online now. It's yeah, online. yeah. So okay, cool. I should add it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me introduce data truncation in computed tomography first. So the problem of data truncation in computed tomography will arise in two scenarios. One is that in some certain clini uh, clinical applications, so only a certain region of the patient is of interest. For example, if we want to deploy uh, a stent to a certain artery, or if we want to get some tissue samples with biopsy, then uh, an X-ray collimator will be placed between the X-ray source and the detector to reduce those. So this is called ROI imaging, or also called interior tomography. So here is an example. So this is the head projection. So if we are only interested in the area near the ear, so for example, this area, then with the collimators, then only this part or this region is acquired. Then we have data truncation laterally and also in this case vertically. The, the other uh, scenario is that for Due to the limited size of flat panel detectors, so they are not big enough to cover the whole imaged body. So yeah, usually we human heads are not so big, so it is fine to cover the whole head. However, for abdomen and also for torso, torsos, because they are, have a much bigger size, then the detectors are not large enough to cover. Then, for example, this is an ideal projection, and this is in practice with a limited size projection. Then we only get the projections in this ROI box or in this detector. Then the projections are also laterally truncated. Image reconstruction from truncated data with the classic FBP reconstruction will suffer from artifacts. So here, this is the reference image, and this is the FBP reconstruction. We can clearly observe this FOV boundary. Then we can see the, uh, that the anatomical structures outside the FOV are missing. And uh, the intensity values inside the FOV are much larger than the reference. Here we can see they are much brighter. So we call this um, copying artifacts because if we plot a live um, profile, then we can see its intensities look like a cup, that's why we call them cupping artifacts. There are many algorithms proposed for data truncation, including heuristic extrapolation, analytic reconstruction, compressed sensing. And today we will apply deep learning for data truncation. So, so far, yeah, two, I only know three papers in this application. One is that from the CAST group, they have proposed to apply the UNET to post-process FBP reconstructions or DBP reconstructions. And they observed that yeah, when, when using the DBP reconstruction as the input of the UNET, they can achieve better image qualities or more robust image, images for various ROIs. And the other paper, the second paper is from Chen Guanghong's group. So they proposed a convolutional neural network to directly reconstruct the images from sonogram data for different trajectories. However, these two methods only address the image quality inside the FOV, so the uh, anatomical structures outside the uh, uh, FOV are still missing. So for FOV extension, so our Siemens colleagues, yeah, they are also here today, welcome. Yeah. So they proposed to <laughs> use the UNET to process FBP reconstruction from extrapolated data, which achieves very promising results. So my algorithm is also based on this, uh, just one step further. So as we learned that deep learning is very sensitive to many factors, so including insufficient training data, noise, and adversarial perturbation. So we have proposed a data consistent re reconstruction method to 
taken by deep learning with compressed, compressed sensing to improve deep learning reconstruction. So today we will also apply this method for truncation correction. So now I will talk about the details about how we apply this method. Here the, the neural network we use is still the same UNET neural network. So for the input of the UNET, we use the images reconstructed by the data extrapolated by this water cylinder extrapolation method. So we call it WCE for short. WCE is a widely used extrapolation method. So here we can see with this WCE extrapolation, then this yeah, copy artifacts, they are reduced very well. However, the anatomical structures outside this FOV, so they are still not correct compared with the ground truth image. That is why we need deep learning to further improve this image. And as I mentioned, the unit here is a post-processing neural network. So such image-to-image -image prediction has no direct connections to measured data. So some incorrect structures will occur. So that's why we propose to use a data-consistent reconstruction method to improve these incorrect structures. So here is the one projection or an ideal detector. And for this region, so we have measured, so we denote denote these measured projections by PM. And still, yeah, there are some two regions which are truncated. So ah, for the measured data, we have this data consistency or data fidelity term, so which is AM times F minus PM. So its norm should be smaller than epsilon 1. So AM is the system matrix for the measured, and measured regions or projections. And for the unmatched projections, so as we already have the deep learning reconstruction, then we can still again use the deep learning reconstruction to provide prior information about the missing data. So this truncated data can be simply estimated by the forward projection of, uh, of the deep learning reconstruction. So P u hat equals A u times F u naught. Then we can estimate this missing data. Then we get the data fidelity term for these truncated regions, AUF minus PU hat, and its norm should be smaller than epsilon 2. And then we also use iterative reconstruction, so WTV, to further reduce noise and artifacts, since there is no noise contained in these regions, and also discontinuous intensities. And here is the same overall objective function. And we evaluate our method in, uh, in the noise case, for data truncation. So th here is one, some results for one example slice. This is the <laughs> reference image, and this is the FPP reconstruction, and this is the WCE reconstruction, as you have seen. And uh, this is the WTV reconstruction. So we can see the structures inside the FOV are, very, are reconstructed very well. However, so these structures outside this FOV are not reconstructed. So Deep learning, uh, you, the unit is able to restore the anatomical structures outside. So the outline looks very good. However, because it is sensitive to noise, so yeah, the, it still suffers from postal noise. Then with our proposed method, then this noise is further reduced. So we also display these images in a narrower window. We can see the organ details much better. Then, yeah. These anatomical structures are obscured by the copying artifact and the noise in the FBP reconstruction. And in the WCE reconstruction, so these some structures, yeah, we can barely see still because of this postal noise. And the outside structures are not correct. And for the WTV, it is very good to reconstruct the structures inside the FOV. So we also compute the root mean square error for this inside the ROI or the FOV, then it, it achieves a very small root mean square error. However, as I mentioned, outside it's not very bad. And for, for the unit, then yeah, it suffers from the noise. And this, here this part is even worse than, the, than its input image. We can see these organ boundaries. <coughs> here we can see them even be better than this. So UNET is very sensitive because UNET is very sensitive to noise. 
and with our proposed method, so these inner structures and all outside structures both are reconstructed uh, very well. And it also achieves uh, the smallest root mean square error inside the ROI. And so here is a short conclusion. So yeah, for different, yeah, for copy artifacts, postal noise, or di structures outside <coughs> FOV or inside FOV, so different methods have their different <coughs> different disadvantages. And uh, our proposed method, it combines WTV, the advantages of WTV and the unit, and we can say it is good for all these aspects. And okay, thank you. Mm -hmm.